We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We glorify you, we honor you. Elion El Gibor. Our King, our Lord, our Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Worthy are you, Lamb of God. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for a brand new day. Oh, hallelujah. We open, oh God, this morning the gatepost of your house over the nations. We declare this morning that there's a release of the fragrance of your spirit across the earth. We bless you, Lamb of God. King of the ages, ancient one. We join the host of heaven to worship you, to honor you, to glorify you, to extol you, to magnify you, to lift your name on high. Yahweh, you are worthy. We rejoice in you. Thank you, Father, for the sound of awakening. Thank you, Lord, for the trumpet. Thank you, Father, for the harp of your spirit. But more so, we thank you, Lord, for that which your spirit, yes, is releasing even into the firmament right now. We celebrate you. We glorify you. We honor you. From the rising of the sun till the setting of the same, let your name be glorified. Friends, I want to welcome you this morning. If you're joining me, welcome to the Potter's Gate. Welcome to the School of Prayer with Christ. I want to pray this morning and just continue to allow the Lord to take us further into his intentions and counsels for our time for our day we know that we are in the midst of a powerful spiritual warfare a warfare that is taking a toll on every aspect of our life but we know that this is needed for us to be able to enter into the next emphasis of god so we can clearly and better represent his prophetic demand for our lives so if you're joining me this morning welcome we want to pray this morning we want to continue to press on we want to continue to hear the heart of god the mind of god we want to continue to receive perspective and direction we want to be instructed yes in regards to the day before us there are several expressions and emphasis several comings several you know pointers that is leading us into the next year's demand of god and we want to understand all of that as we continue to pray. One of the uh, scriptures that I'm, or a few scriptures that I'm going to be flashing this morning will give us a kind of a direction into how the Lord wants us to pray. All right. So uh, we're just going to f- allow the Lord, amen, to continue to, in fact, let's start with the scripture. All right. I, I believe this is very important. Uh, in the book of Acts, of course, the book of Acts you know gives to us the the framework the the the, the if you will the, the foundational understanding of the kinds of the kind of church that the lord amen is building is emphasizing it lays for us a strong foundation of amen what the ecclesia is the nature the life amen the mission the mandate of the ecclesia all right we grow into that understanding of course but the book of Acts, amen, the character, the, the life, the apostolic culture of the people defines to us, amen, what our prayer life should express and what we should be, amen, pressing into, all right, particularly as we step into a day where God, amen, is building and crafting himself, amen, a third day temple, a third day church, a people, amen, that cannot be, that cannot be stopped, that cannot be destroyed by the works of the enemy. And one of the things we see in the book of Acts is that these people understand, amen, the nature, the culture, the power, amen, of prayer. They say, but we will give ourselves, amen, continually. That's the key word I want us to look into. 
all right that in the days where you know that, that the enemy is trying to quench the fire is trying to shut down is trying to limit is trying to you know kind of you know bring a people to a point in fact the, the the church the saints to a point to a place where their prayer life okay is is being snuffed you know out they are, they are, the fire on the altar amen is going off and we can feel it but in the midst of that there is a sound amen that is coming do not go into slumber do not let the fire die amen do not allow the enemy to hinder to frustrate you know god's intention there are things god has committed into our into our hands there are nations waiting on us there are you know society depending on your prayer depending on my prayer and we need to begin to understand amen this this direction so that when we pray we pray with a sense of purpose we pray with a sense of you know urgency we pray with a sense of understanding they say we will give ourselves is in the midst of you know certain activity that we're almost derailing the apostolic head of the church all right and of course those are very important things because it was an issue of you know welfare but they say we will give ourselves in other words why welfare is important why we need to do other things that are necessary we've got to make the main thing the main thing we have to make the main thing the main thing but we will give ourselves that's the key word after they have chosen all right seven you know powerful men you know who can take care of other you know uh, uh, things that needs to be taken care of and at one of the things that I was saying yesterday is that we need to understand the priority of the Lord, the priority of the Spirit for the days that we live in. All right, we, today we have priests, okay, who who have been, you know, because of needs and challenges, they've left their duty, they've left their post, they've left their place of calling. You see, the enemy has been able to talk the church, the saints, to certain condition that, all right, you know, uh, we, we have to go look for food. We have to go look for money. We have to go look. We have come to a point where we no longer see this assignment as a business. You know, a business pays you. You, you. you get to be sustained by a business. You know, when I woke up this morning, I, once again, the Lord opened my heart. You see, I've got a lot of need, particularly financial needs. But the Lord, when the Lord stirred my heart and said, Isaiah, this is your calling. This is where, you know, are you going to leave this work and start going to look for money? Yes, you may get a lot of money, but what is going to happen to the souls, to the life, to the people that have committed into your hands? You've got to make a choice. I'm in need of money. Yes, I need to do things. I need to pay bills. I need to. But what is going to happen to the soul, to the life, to the people who are looking up to you, who who have commit, who, who who have committed into your hands for you to continue to shape them? And I'm not using that word shape loosely. I was reading Jeremiah, you know, 51 this morning. And the Lord said, Amen, you are my battle axe, the weapon of my warfare with you. <laughs> and imagine me leaving the position where I'm supposed to be a blacksmith, where I'm supposed to be shaping people into the right amen, formation, into the right instrument for God to use. But I've left that thing. I'm going to look for money. You see, we've got to understand all of these things. And this is just the honest truth. And I'm saying all of this in the context of Acts chapter 6 verse 4. But we will. Who are these people who say, but we will? Who are this company of people? Who are this company of people that while others, all right, are seeking ends meet and they are trying to survive and there's welfare. But they say, but we will give ourselves. Oh, come on. I don't know if I'm staring your heart this morning, but I want you to hear the voice of God. If you don't want to hear my voice, hear the voice of God. Hear the voice of the scripture. But we will give ourselves. Look at that. Continually. Continually means there are no gaps in time. You know, in, in time span. We will give ourselves. This is our calling. This is our mandate. And whenever the, the enemy tried to draw my heart away, you know, from the from my calling, from my you know assignment, from my mandate. This is my core assignment and my mandate. I should give myself continually to prayer. Beloved, prayer is a business. Beloved, prayer is a business. Prayer is a service to God and to creation. Prayer and intercession is a service. This morning I found myself, God leading me to pray for South Africa. I can't remember when last I prayed for South Africa as a nation. You know? 
You get carried away by all kinds of things. Yes. But guess what? Nations are upheld by the prayer of people, not because of what they, you know, politicians do. You are the one upholding the nation. God reminded me again, I'm going to show you the scripture. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry. A ministry is a service. Do you know that? Apostle, a ministry is a service. Prophet, a ministry is a service. We will give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry. People go to work. They go to a service. They go offer a service. A ministry is a service. We will give ourselves continually. I'm charging you this morning that as God continues to speak to us regarding the call to be transformed in this season, this transformation is not going to happen by chance. It's going to happen because the people have given themselves. It's because the people have committed themselves. And Father, this is our cry out this morning. This is our prayer this morning. This is my cry this morning, oh God, that we will be awakened, that there will be a generation in this new day awakening to this ministry. That we will understand that we cannot bring a change in our nation, in our society, in our communities, in our home without the people who have given themselves. Without this company of people who say, but we will give ourselves. But we will. Not everyone, but we. I make, I make up my mind. I want to be part of amen, the community. I want to be part of the company. I want to be part of the tribe. But we will give ourselves. Don't give yourself to that thing. Don't give yourself to something else. I refuse to give myself to something else. Yes, I know there are needs. I know there are all kinds of challenges pounding our mind. Those people, this company of people, they also have challenges. They have family. They have needs. I'm sure many of them, all right, have, you know, bills to pay and all of that. But they say, but we will give ourselves. Oh, come on. This is where things begin to shift. This is where we begin to take nations. This is where we begin to transform society. This is where we begin to craft the prophetic intentions of God. When we make up our mind to give ourselves to eternal service. What are you giving yourself to? What are you giving yourself to, brother? What are you giving yourself to? But we will. It's a conjunction. But we will. Something happened before this statement. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Prayer is a continual business. It's not something you do, you know, when you feel like. It's not something you do when you are happy, when you feel joyful. It's something you do in season and out of season. They say pray in season and out of season. But we will give ourselves. Because God uses prayer to change. God uses the tool of prayer to transform. God uses the commitment of men and women, yes, to this mandate to begin to reform and transform society and transform, you know, community and transform government. We refuse to be distracted from this sacred calling. Refuse. Refuse to be derailed from this sacred calling. Your first calling, brother, sister, as a saint, your first calling, hallelujah, is to connect with God in the place of prayer. Because every other thing is made bare. Every other thing becomes clear. Every other thing's perspective are developed in the place of prayer. You understand? perspective are created understanding is given in the place of prayer when you begin to pray a new world hallelujah yes is introduced to you when you begin to pray you begin to see your world differently you begin to see yourself differently you begin to see things around you differently when you truly begin to pray things start to change you begin to align to the ways of god to the will of god have you noticed that when you stop praying you begin to see the way the world sees and you begin to make the same excuse, hallelujah, that the world makes. Look at this word, Jeremiah. As we pray this morning, as we understand the heart of God, I want you to see the heart cry of the Spirit. God said to Jeremiah, <clears throat> Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. 
I knew you. You know what that means? That means that God knew, hallelujah, that there will be needs in your life. God knew that there will be challenges. God knew all of the things, amen, that your life is going to be characterized by. God knew the good, the bad, and the ugly that is going to happen. But he said, I knew you. And in that knowledge, God says, amen, yes, I have sanctified you, set you aside, ordained you, amen, as a prophet to the nation. What is the work of a prophet to the nation? Is it to go to the marketplace and be looking for money and to be, you know, trying to, you know, motivate people? What is the work of a prophet to the nation? If you're listening to me, you have a prophetic mark upon your life. You know what that means? You are separated. You are different. You got to understand that there are service and there are service. There are occupation and there are occupation. There are calling and there are calling. There are ministry and there are ministry. God said, Jeremiah, I knew you before you were born. Hallelujah. I have sanctified. You know what the word sanctify means? I've set you apart. I've placed upon you the mark of sacredness. And I ordain you. Your ordination began before even you were born. Think about that. I ordain you to be a voice. I ordain you to be a prophet. You know what that means? A prophet is one who represents heaven, who represents God. A prophet is a messenger. A prophet brings, amen, message from a different realm, message from a different order. A message, you understand? A prophet is one who is sent to represent, amen, another domain, another dominion. A prophet is one, amen, sent to bring the heart of the father to a realm, to a nation you see God qualified it, I, I'm not just I didn't just sanctify you as a prophet but I sanctify you as a prophet to nations, to nations <laughs> if you're going to be a prophet to nations, don't you think that you've been given a message to the nation don't you think you have been mandated hallelujah, with the capacity amen, of one who can go into nation and you know what that means, that just means that what God wants to do in your life will cut across boundaries, limitations regions Territories. What are you seeing? When you are captured by the spirit of the age, you throw away your prophetic mandate. D listen to this. While God is speaking to a prophet here, but we can tap into the prophetic grace of this word. You know, a prophet is unique. One of the things about prophets is that they are unique, they are very unique. Amen. Yes, yes. You may say, but Isaiah, I'm not a prophet. But if you're listening and you've been listening and you've been tapping into the flow of this river, hey, there's a spirit. There's a spirit called the prophetic, the spirit of Jesus. If you have Christ in you, you have a portion of the prophetic. You may not fully walk in the office of a prophet. And I'm not speaking to you, amen, from the context of the office of a prophet. But I'm saying there is something God wants you, amen, yes, to understand. That is birthed out of the place of prayer. Because that is what shapes and forms, amen, the prophetic. The prophetic is formed and shaped from the womb, amen, of prayer. Then when you begin to pray, you begin to understand the destiny of nation. When you begin to pray, you begin to see the heart of God, the mind of God. And you are able to utter that out, amen, over realms, over regions, over cities. You cannot even begin to engage this end of days without a strong prophetic spirit, which of course is birth in the place of prayer and intercession. And this is what I'm calling you to understand this morning. This is what I'm calling you. This is what the Spirit of the Lord is tearing our heart. You need to begin to say to yourself, I'm a prophet sent to the nation. All right, I'm a prophet. I've got a message. I've got a calling. I've got a grace upon my life. I'm sent to the nation. Whatever. Listen, you can be born into South Africa and yet you're sent into South Africa. You understand? Yes, wherever you are, you need to begin to say to yourself, I've been sent for such a time as this. God has sent me. I have, yes, a grace to represent, to reflect, to manifest God's intention. I take my place in the place of prayer. And this is the reason why, amen, you must not allow, hallelujah, yes, the fire on the altar of your prophetic mandate to go off. Can you see I'm building this morning. Leviticus chapter 6. 
Verse 12 says, the fire on the altar shall be kept burning. If you want to keep your prophetic acts, you want to keep your prophetic grace, you want to keep that flow of a prayer lifestyle, you don't want to, amen, yes, be quenched. You don't want to go into oblivion. The scripture says, amen, the, 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 the fire on the altar. If there's going to be a fire, there has to be an altar. If there's an altar, there must be fire. We can build prayer. I was thinking about that this morning that before God answered the prayer of Elijah, amen, on Mount Carmel, Elijah had to build something first. He had to build, he had to build the altar. He had to build, you see, there is an understanding that in prayer, amen, we, we, we come to the place of divine architecture. What is the heart of God? And that is why, amen, they say we'll give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word because the ministry of the word is what gives us blueprints to how to pray, to what we need to pray for, to how, amen, we should engage the nation in the place of prayer. The word gives you blueprints. And then you exercise that blueprint, amen, yes, in prayer. It goes together, they go hand in hand. The fire on the altar must not go off. But before they can be fire on the altar, we've got to build it. And that is what I'm doing, that is what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to build, I'm trying to rebuild, amen, your altar. Maybe your altar has been shattered, of course, by the spirit of Jezebel. That's what Jezebel does. When Jezebel begins to attack you, attack your home, attack your family, what it goes for, amen, is the altar. Because that is the place where the incense goes up to God. <laughs> he attacks your life, he attacks your mind. He attacks... She attacks your thoughts. That spirit comes for amen your thoughts. You see, the altar of prayer is built within our thought pattern. Yes. The altar of prayer is built within, within us. Jezebel comes, amen, and tell you you are good for nothing. Look at what you're doing. It, it, it's nothing. It will never do anything. I mean, Jezebel, Jezebel came and attacked Nehemiah. He said, this thing you're trying to restore, this thing you're trying to build is weak. If a fox walk on this wall, it will collapse. Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. Go look for something else. Go back, all right, to Babylon. Go serve the king. Go serve the king. Go back. Leave this project. Leave this thing. Don't restore the walls. Don't restore the, the gate. Don't build. No, leave it. Leave it burnt. Leave it broken. And that's what the enemy wants. That was the voice of Jezebel speaking to Nehemiah. Nehemiah says, sorry, I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> I'm doing a great work. I'm doing a good work. Amen. Come on. Can we have a company of people in this new day that will begin to hear the voice of divine renaissance to rebuild, hallelujah, the burnt gates and the broken walls? We want to sound this amen, proclamation into the airwave. Let all men and women call to pray and intercede in this season. Awake from their slumber. And this is why we say this is the voice of awakening. You have to understand that there's a prophetic awakening coming to you in this season. Listen, all of those things you're running after is not worth it. They don't want it. They don't want it. They don't want it. After the Lord rose... Peter said, I'll go a fishing. We've been journeying with this man. Now he's gone. Let's go back to our, let's go back to our profession. After all, he's left us. There's nothing to live for again. There's nothing to hope for again. But one thing we can do, we can fall back to our old profession. No, come on. He who is called does not look back. Your hands are set in the plow. The Lord does not take delight in them who look back. Your hands are set in the plow. There's a greater work, hallelujah, for you. There's a greater mandate for you. You've been called out. You've been called out. You've been called out. You've been called out. You've been fashioned. The Lord has not left you. Hear the voice of an awakening this morning. Give yourself to prayer. Give yourself to the mandate of the Spirit. Give yourself to the demand of God. Give yourself to the call of the Spirit. Give yourself, yield yourself. Father, we cry out to you this day. We cry out to you this morning, oh Father. We cry out to you in this new day, oh God. We cry out to you, oh God. In this new day, the eighth day, the day of a new beginning. This is the eighth day of the month of May. Lord, we cry out, oh God. Begin afresh with us. Light, O oh God, Barado Shianda, the fire on this altar. As you repair, as Elijah began to rebuild with the with the twelve stones, O oh God, that has been broken and shattered. We declare in the name of Jesus that once again, O oh God, there shall be a going forth, yes, of utterance. 
proclamations and declarations, your prophetic intentions, oh God, over our lives and our community, over our city, homes, family, marriages, uh, relationship, oh God, careers, business, oh God, once again, Lord, shall be restored to the place of divine order. We pray in Jesus' name that we will not con- we will not stop praying, but we will continue, oh God, to ask of you, you who make mention of the law, give yourself no rest and give him no rest until Zion becomes, until Zion becomes. That is our cry this morning. We want, oh God, yes, a dimension in our in our prayer that there will be, oh God, an activation, oh God, of that which you have spoken. These are the days of the fulfillment, oh God, of your prophetic mandate. And we say, Lord, we will not go into slumber. This is not the time to, to, to sleep. This is not the time to sleep. This is the day of the awakening. This is the sound of awakening. And we declare in Jesus' name, let every ears begin to hear. Let every heart begin to respond to the demand, to the mandate of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we refuse, we refuse the enemy to steal that which God has committed into our hands. We refuse the enemy, yes, to, to come into the garden, into the farm that you have committed into our hand. We refuse to go into slumber. We say we will give ourselves, we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Why? Because prayer is the key how we transact, amen, with heavenly mandate. Prayer is the is the is the realm where we connect, where we receive, where we understand, yes, where we interact. Prayer is the link between heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Father, we proclaim this morning. Link us up, oh God. Connect us to this flow, to this river, to this mandate in the name of Jesus. Prayer is the bridge. Prayer is the potter. Hallelujah. Where the inflow and the outflow of the things of God and of his kingdom becomes a manifest reality in the name of Jesus. This day, we enter into the realm, yes, of birthing. We enter into the realm of birthing. This vision, this seed that you have impregnated us with, oh God, we declare it shall not die. This baby will not die. This vision will not die. This calling will not die. This ministry will not die. This calling will not die. This ministry would not die. In the name of Jesus, we pray that there will be a performance of the things which has been written. As Mary said, there shall be a performance of the things which has been said. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Even as we repent of our sins and iniquity, of our lukewarmness, oh God. You said, Mam Darabo, you do not want us to be lukewarm. Rather, you prefer us to be cold. So you can walk in us to be hot again. And so, Father, we declare, deliver us from the spirit of the laudation. Deliver us from the laudation spirit. Neither hot nor cold. We take our place this day. We declare we want fire on this altar. Yes, Father. We want fire on this apostolic altar. We want fire on this altar that has been shaped by the hand of the prophetic, by the hand of Elijah. We want in the name of Jesus, uh, every aspect of our life once again to be restored back uh, in transformation to the place uh, of divine intent uh, in the name of Jesus uh, so we can begin to fulfill uh, what you have ordained for us. Uh, we declare uh, this fire will not go off. Uh, oh no, this fire will not go off. Uh, it will burn day and night. Uh, the fire we burn day and night. Uh, the fire we burn day and night. Uh, the fire we burn day and night. Uh, day and night the fire we burn. Hallelujah. Day and night the fire we burn. Day and night the fire we burn. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. If this was the word to the Levitical order, how much more those who are in the Melchizedek order? You see, in the things of God, there is progression. The Levitical priesthood was a foundation. Hallelujah. For the, for the, for the, for the, for the you know, for the for the Melchizedek order, which of course is a type and a shadow of the Jesus priesthood. Hallelujah. You've got to understand that Melchizedek order was just a foundation to bring us, hallelujah, into the Jesus priesthood. See, there are three orders in the priesthood. There's the Levitical priesthood. Hallelujah. There's the Melchizedek priesthood. And there is a priesthood that sits at the right hand at the right hand of the father making intercessions for the saints 
Melchizedek is just a is just a reflection. He's a type. He's not Jesus. Don't make the mistake. Melchizedek is not Jesus, but it's the nearest thing that reflects a priesthood in Christ. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Even in David, there was a priesthood. There was a priesthood in Judah. And we've got to understand the reason why these men did the kind of things they did is because they understood their priesthood. Now we are coming to the culminations of all the priesthood. Now we are given a better opportunity. Now we have entrance to, to move from their Aaronic priesthood, hallelujah, and enjoy even the Davidic priesthood and come into the Melchizedek order so we can fully, amen, appreciate and walk in the priesthood of Christ. Because as he is, the Bible says so we are. But you cannot just take that scripture, amen, on a face value and just take it, you know, based on, oh, well, as he is, so we are. No, you've got to understand how to get there, how to move in rank. There are rankings in the spirit. There are rankings in the spirit. We take, we take our place. We take our place. We take our place. We take our place in the spirit. We take our place in the advancement of God's prophetic demand. The fire on the altar shall be kept burning. It must not be extinguished. That's the word, friends, this morning. Are you listening to me as we pray this morning? The fire must not be extinguished. What are those things that can extinguish our fire? Our pride, our self dependence, our arrogance, our lust. Yes, the pursuit for material things. What are the things that can quench the fire? Yes. Our lack of understandings of the ways of God, religious spirit, religious spirit, carnality. What are the things that can quench? You know those things. You know those things. You can highlight them by yourself. The works of the flesh, the pride of life, the deceitfulness of riches. Yes. Galatians chapter 4, amen, speaks to us of the things that can quench the fire on the altar friends the call is for us to guard the building of the altar and of course amen the fire on the altar you say the fire must not be extinguished it means that the enemy is going to try to extinguish the fire you know while i was thinking about this it occurred to me that when the fire in us is extinguished we begin to look for a different fire and that's what we found in in, in you know in peter and when you begin to amen try to get yourself warm by other fires that is not made by God that is not built on the altar amen of God of, of, of God in the place of prayer guess what you will compromise you will lie and that is what we saw with Peter they said but you are one of them he said no I'm not one I'm not one of his disciples the scripture says he was actually warming himself by the fire when he when he lied when he compromised there are all kinds of fire today that people are building for themselves but alas that fire cannot quench cannot can, cannot warm them in fact that fire is leading them into more of compromise more of a lie there's so much fire that we're talking about but the fire is not bringing us to the place of divine intention a fire of compromise a fire of lie a fire of deceit now it's time to leave those fire and go to the right fire jeremiah say you go go to your own light that you have lit Go see if that light is going to give you direction. Go see if that fire is going to give you warmth. Come on. It's, it's a new day, friends. We've got to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. I'm reading Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12. It says, the fire on the altar. You see, fire is meant for the altar. Fire is meant for the altar. When it comes to sacrifice, fire is meant, amen, for the altar. When it comes to sacrifice, fire is meant for the altar. When it comes, amen, to being a vessel that God is going to use, amen, to represent his purpose, fire is meant for refinement, hallelujah, and for shaping. God said, you are my battle of axe. You are my battle of axe, my weapon of one. And the Lord was saying to me, how do you think I make a battle of axe? Of course, I put, amen, the material in the fire and I beat it into shape. I beat it into shape. <clears throat> that is how, amen, yes, 
the things of God works. So when you find yourself in a situation that looks difficult, that looks painful, that looks, you know, contrary, it's because God, amen, wants to shape you, amen, into the weapon, into an instrument, amen, that he said, with you, I will destroy Babylon. Oh, God woke me up this morning and I said to myself, Lord, I thank you. you, don't, you don't you understand that what you're going through, amen, is a process, is a refining process, amen, to shape you into the right instrument to destroy Babylon. To destroy Babylon. But we have to understand that first of all, before we can be shaped to be, to, you know, to be a destroyer of Babylon, we have to, first of all, amen, become an altar and become a fire, amen, so that the sacrifice, which is us, laid on that altar earlier, can rise up as a smoke unto God. We've got to understand the progression and the order. You can't be an instrument to destroy Babylon if your life has not become a smoke. If you have not become a burnt offering, come on. If you have not become a burnt offering earlier on the altar of fire, it's burning, it's painful. Like we've been reading, Isaac is showing us something. Isaac is teaching us something. How to be a worthy instrument. He was the only son, according to God. God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac. Go lay him on the altar. La deva no mo shanda barabaha. This thing is not, it's not meant to destroy you. It is meant to kill the flesh. So your life can become a worthy instrument in the hand of God. Yes, it's all going to make sense, friends. It is all going to make sense. One of these days, we're going to have a better understanding. We're going to say, oh, wow, now I see. So this is the reason why God took, took me through this route. This is what God was actually doing. This is what God was actually up to. Yes, he's always up to something. Never question him. Never query him. Amen. Like I said with, to you yesterday, Isaac never challenged the wisdom of his father. Father, yes, my son. Abraham said. He replied, yes, my son. We've got the wood. We've got the knife. We've got the fire. Where is the lamb for sacrifice? God will provide. El Shaddai will manifest himself. Karab Sumbrano. What am I doing? I'm giving you perspective to why we pray and why we need to pray. You've got to understand that it's all going to make sense. It's all going to make sense. It is all going to make sense. But for night may not make sense. But you continue. True obedience, hallelujah, we possess. True obedience, we become instrument. True obedience, hallelujah, and trust. We become all the heaven has ordained for us. We surrender ourselves. We yield ourselves to the dealings of God, to the call of God. We declare in the name of Jesus that there's a reconstruction. There's as a rebuilding, yes, of the altar in the name of Jesus, as Elijah rebuilds stone to his stone, Galadaboshaya, stone to his stone, as Elijah begin to bring back. Listen, friend, it takes it, it takes spiritual prophetic intelligence to build an altar for God. Elijah began on the on Mount Camel. He took his time. He rearranged. He rebuilt back. Amen. Yes, that is what we need apostles for. Not a apostles who are just making noise, who are just exciting people. No, we need apostles who can rebuild the altar. Shalamo kayada bahatayada, gebrono moshanda, marabo. When 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 Jezebel comes and start tearing down altars of nations altars of homes altars of prayer that god has ordained and designed yes for homes for society yes for children for men and women when jezebel with a powerful governmental spirit start tearing those things out we need not children we need yes kingdom-minded apostolic spirits who can engage jezebel on mount camel first in restoring altars in rebuilding altars so that when the fire of God comes, the altar is ready. You cannot presume the altar. 
if you want God to come down, if we want God to come down over the nation, over our land, over our community, if we truly, listen to what the Lord just drew in my spirit, if we want to reach the nations for God, if we want to disciple the nation, we have to first go and rebuild the altar. Because that is what would draw the people. Can you see? The people were drawn to the place, yes, called Mount Carmel. Because Mount Carmel is a place where we decide who people are going to serve. What people are going to listen to. Have you noticed that when, when Elijah called the people and said, choose this day, they did not respond. <laughs> you know why they didn't respond? Because the altar has not been built. When the altar was built and the fire of, of God came, the people became the instrument of judgment. It was the people who took the false prophets of Baal and go kill them. Let's get the order right. Let's get the order right. Let's get the pattern right. There's a divine blueprint God is bringing. People whose hearts have become cold and lukewarm cannot do anything for God. You will continue to wind them and wind them. They will not respond. You, you, you first rebuild the altar. When the fire falls, you're going to see them wonder, is this the same person? Yes. <laughs> Have you seen what happened? When the altar was raised, amen, yes. In that place called the upper room. You know why they chose a lofty place? Because that house represents an altar unto God. <laughs> it was a lofty place. It's a meet in the upper room. You want to build an altar? You don't build altar in the valley. Jesus built an altar in the place called Alia, Mountain of Transfiguration. He took them there. Yes. Legale branimo shayada. Yes. You want to engage with heavenly things. You've got to build altars in the heavenly order. The mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted. Kandora nimo shayada. When that thing was, hallelujah, yes, arranged in the lofty place, what happened? The Bible says the fire fell. Each one had his own fire. Equally distributed. That brother you think cannot do anything. That sister you think don't know anything. You let the altar be built. You will wonder. You will, you will, you, your jaw will drop and like, what's, yes. Ordinary people became extraordinary people when the fire fell. That is why the last baptism is called the baptism of fire. It's important we understand what the Spirit of God is emphasizing in this new day. Hallelujah. You look around. It's like we're toiling. We've caught nothing. There seems to be, you understand, a sense of dryness. The spirit of dryness. The spirit of lukewarmness. We have to go on behalf of the people. We have to start to build altars in the Spirit. We have to begin to build altars in our streets. Yeah, all, building altar is not building another church. No, it's building a dimension that will open the heavens. <laughs> Hallelujah. There was an altar built in the wilderness when, Je when Jacob was traveling to Pandanaram. Why? How do I know? Because at that point, at that spot that this guy laid down with a rod, the Bible says the heavens open. Angels were ascending and descending. That's where that's what happens when you build an altar. There is an interaction of heaven and earth. There's a coming and going. There is an accessing. Hallelujah. There's an outflow and inflow of the things of God. You will see upon the Son of Man angels ascending and descending. Spirit of the Lord, help us. Give us our hearts in this new day to understand the core. To understand what we are doing, to understand the calling, the, to, to understand the true, the true calling, the true calling in this end of days, so we don't go into oblivion. Those who go into oblivion are those, Hallelujah, whose altar has been destroyed and whose fire has been quenched by the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel will finish your ministry before you know it. Je Jezebel will take over. You see. Jezebel, she's very strategic. She went for the altar. There's no altar, there's no prophetic voice. <laughs> Woo! Shalala Bogayanda. Lebranimo Shandabrano Mazagaya. 
Where there are no altars, there are no activities of the Spirit. There are no movement of the Spirit. I hope you understand what I mean when I say altar. It's a place where God comes and meets with us. It's a place where we meet with God. It's a place of divine transaction. It's a place, amen, of spiritual exchange. I'm not talking about all those nonsense. We're not talking out there building altars. That's not what I'm talking. You got to understand what I mean. I need to make it clear to you. So I'm not echoing what somebody is saying on there. I'm telling you what the scripture says. Jezebel wants to destroy society, destroy a nation. She goes for the altar. Then when she goes for the altar, she goes for the prophets. It's called strategic battle. You see, battles are not won by multitude. Battles are won strategically. You can win a battle before you ever shoot an arrow. You just need to know what to do. You just need to know what to attack. Yes. You just need to find the kingpin. Attack that person. What, what is the life source of the church? Attack it. What is the life source of the home? What is the life source of a man? Attack it. What is the what is a woman looking for? Go for it. You destroy everything that they represent. It's time we stop, you know, wasting wasting time and wasting effort fighting things that has no impact to that spirit. On that spirit, the fire on the altar. Altar means a lot to God. Or else, it won't make it a priority in the priesthood. Because everything you offer to God, if that thing is, is a living thing, if that thing has blood, it must be offered on the altar. It must be burnt. The fat that represents the strength of that thing must be burnt. God never uses anything that has a life of his own. You must offer your life. God at the The fire on the altar shall not, the, the fire on the altar shall be kept. <clears throat> fire don't keep themselves. <laughs> fire don't keep themselves burning. Hello, hello. Are you still there? Fire don't keep themselves. There's no fire that keeps itself burning. If the fire is burning, somebody's keeping it burning. It has to be kept. That's your work, priesthood. That's your work. That's my work. That is your mandate. That's my mandate. The, listen, as the fire dies, every other thing around our life dies. The fire symbolizes our existence, symbolizes amen, our relevancy, symbolizes the power, symbolizes amen, yes, our advancement. The fire on the altar shall be kept. Who keeps it? Why do you think God had to choose an entire tribe? Why do you think God had to se separate? Consecrate for himself an entire an entire tribe from a from a nation and he made them a priest. Their duty was to keep the fire burning. If you don't understand that order, you will not appreciate what we're talking about. It's not by might. All of those things you see people do, all of those you know, things you see happening is because certain people are at their gate post. They are walking by the altar. You can't see them. You don't see them. But they are the ones making things happen because they can pray. Any church that you see advancing, doing things supernaturally, moving, or right, is because there are certain people who are keeping the fire. They're keeping the fire burning. They're keeping the fire. You see the man of God comes and he preached down heaven. Ah, it's because he's got a man. Yes, a dimension that keeps the fire burning. Your life is equated. Amen. 
to the to the to the burning of the fire on the altar your strength your vision your ability your capability your sustenance hallelujah yes is determined yes by the quality of the fire on the altar you don't have to accept it you're going to realize it one day soon and that's why the enemy would do everything to do what to extinguish the fire when you extinguish the when you extinguish the fire yes you will be seeking to do all kinds of things you will be compromising you find yourself in places you don't want to be i can tell you that because i've been there so i'm not just telling you some theory i'm telling you practical I love to pray but I knew what the enemy did in my life to stop me to hinder me to quench my fire life can happen to you I'm telling you when they say come and pray you know you say I don't want to pray you got to understand the power the place the importance you don't want to step out of your house this morning which job are you going to when you have not you have not called on the name of the Lord you have not kept that fire burning they said the fire on the altar shall be kept burning this is this is an eternal injunction this is an eternal injunction the fire on the altar shall be kept burning it must not be extinguished what is that spirit trying to extinguish the fire who is that entity what is that system what is that power what is that amen yes challenge circumstance you're going through that is keeping that is stopping you hallelujah from keeping the fire burning on the altar every morning the priest is to add wood to the fire every morning god help me god help me every morning who the priest did you see the word add, add wood? I'm saying this is how we get to be transformed. We're dealing with transformation in the month of May. We want to move. We want to come to a day where our life can radiate the glory of God, can continue to shine like a like a like a like a royal diadem. We want to. Oh, it's not going to happen by chance, friends. We just have to ask the Lord to help us. God help us. Help us, oh God, to give ourselves to this divine injunction. Help us to respond to this divine calling. Help us to give ourselves to this wisdom. Wisdom is speaking to us. Wisdom is aligning our heart. Wisdom is calling us to understand what will make for, yes, our advancement. What will make for our journey. What will make for our grace in this new day. Wisdom is telling us how we can keep our spirituality. How we can keep our journey. How we can continue to track the ways of the Lord. The fire on the altar shall be kept burning. How do you keep the fire burning? Of course, by prayer. It must be kept burning. Every morning, the priest must add wood to the fire. Arrange the burnt offering on it and the and burn the fat portion you know what that means burn the fat portion of the peace offering that fat portion is your strength is your idea is your own wisdom that is what is known amen as the fat portion the fat belongs to god the priest dare not eat the fat it must it must it must burn lean not unto your own understanding the says amen yes you have to understand this or else friends you will allow yourself to be lied to thinking you have an ability of your own morning by morning you must be awakened awakened your ears must be awakened to listen to the divine instruction for the day the fat must be must be laid on the altar your strength your wisdom 
your idea, your ability, it all represents the fact. It belongs to God. You've got to lay it on the altar. It must burn. So God can receive it, amen, as a smoke offering rising unto him. That is the mandate of the Spirit. Isaiah 50, verse 4. He awakens me morning by morning. Awakens my ears to listen. Like one being instructed. Like one being instructed. We do not give ourselves to the instructions of this world. We do not give ourselves, you understand, to the ideas of this world, to the spirit of this age. Humanistic wisdom, humanism has almost taken over the church. Psychic have taken the place of prophets in the body of Christ. Good idea have taken the place of godly wisdom. Everything we do now is for self-promotion. When we do things in the name of God is to project, is to promote ourselves. You have not been burnt on the altar. Oh, may we hear the cry of God. May we hear the cry of the Spirit. May we understand that we're living in the day of the Laodicean church. This is the day of lukewarmness like never before. Lukewarmness in wholesale. People hear things like this and they still go and do their own thing. It's a spirit that is pervading society. Pervading every look and cranny of the nation. But we hear a call this morning. We hear the sound of the spirit. We are still salvageable. We are still redeemable. God can still redeem. God is restoring altars in this new day. Let's hear the cry of the Spirit. Let's respond to the mandate of heaven. Let's call upon the Lord. Call upon Him while it is near. This is the day of awakening. This is the day of the turning away. Turn to me and be saved. Hear the voice of redemption. Hear the sound. The sound of restoration. Hear the sound of Him that is calling you to the mountainside. Come away with me, Peter, James, and John. Let me show you things you have never seen before. Come to the place of understanding. Come to the place of awakening. Come hear my voice. Come see my face like you have never seen it before. He who eats of me will live again. Pray like you have never prayed before. And if you can't pray, ask the Lord, baptize me with the spirit of prayer. Give me once again, restore to me the spirit of supplication. Help me, Lord. Awaken my heart. Don't let me, oh God, die in this prayerlessness spirit. This prayerlessness age. Don't let me, yes, be captured. Don't, don't let me, don't leave me here. Do a work in my heart. Do a work in my life. Awaken me. Awaken me. Steer my heart in the night. Steer my heart. Wake me up, oh God. Wake me up. Wake me up. Teach me how to pray once again. Guide me in the path of truth. Don't leave me to my foolishness. Don't leave me to my own thing. I have no might of my own. I have no power of my own. I have no grace of my own. I have no ability of my own. I can dress myself, but I accept you. Guide me and lead me. I will fall into the mud. I can wash myself, wash me, cleanse me. Teach me, oh God. Teach me how to pray. He said, when you pray, say, Father, Lord, I come to you as my father. I've, I've left you. I've left the place of fatherhood. I've left the place of knowing you as a father. But I'm coming back. As you draw me, I will respond. As you draw me, I will yield. As you call me, I will respond. Call me, draw me to the place of the altar. Call me to the place where my identity is truly known and defined. Call me to the place of your, of your purpose and desire again. Help me, Lord, once again to know how to give myself to prayer. Help me to know how to give myself to prayer. We will give ourselves continually. Give ourselves continually. Help me to give myself continually to this, to this mandate, to this ministry. 
prayer is a ministry is a service unto 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 god and creation help me lord stir my heart awaken me lord help me to hear the sound of your spirit draw me to the place yes of 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 devotion bring me to the place oh god yes father that i can know that i can hear help me i need you i need you i need you more than life i need you more than the breath that i breathe I need you more than the water that I drink. I need you more than the food that I eat. I need you more than the clothes that I wear. I need you, Spirit of the Lord. Don't leave me a prayerless person. Awaken me. Help me to know how to give myself to prayer continually and to the ministry of your word. Help me to see the joy. Help me to feel the joy of knowing you again. Do not take from me the joy of my salvation. Help me to know the pleasure that are in your right hand. Spirit of God, do a work in me again. Do a work in my life. Help me to stand in the gap on behalf yes of my community. Help me to stand. Help me to know that you have called me out for a reason so I can go on behalf of I take my place in the name of Jesus I take my place I take my place help me not to sample yes things yes by the hearings of ears and the and the and the sight of yes of 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 my eyes help me to know and discern things through the inner ears through the inner eyes open the eyes of my heart open my mind oh God to your voice to your speakings to your dealings help me to see things through the spirit help Help me to engage things through the spirit. Help me to change uh, in the spirit and through the spirit. Bring me to your mountain. Bring me to the place where I'm reconstructed. Uh, bring me to the place where the stones are rebuilt uh, as an altar. Make me your house. Uh, make me a house of prayer. Make me a house of prayer. He said this house of prayer has been turned to a place of thieves and dens of, of robbers. Uh, Jesus said do not turn my, my father's house meant to be a house of prayer yes to something else uh, Lord I acknowledge my life my house has been turned to something else uh, I've given myself to something contrary to what you designed it for Lord restore me back uh, restore me back to the place uh, re restore me back to the person you have ordained me to be I want to be that house of prayer make me a house of prayer make me a house of prayer make me a house of prayer make me an instrument of prayer make me a channel of prayer make me a potter of prayer I need you I need you Lord more than yesterday I need you I need you without you I'm dead without you I will compromise without you I will lie without you oh God in my life I will live my life, yes, in compromise without you. I will walk in pride without you. I will express lust without you. Lord, I cannot sustain my life without you. God, I need you. Touch me. Restore to me the grace, the power, the boldness to stand in the prayer. To stand in the prayer. To stand in the prayer. Prayer is connecting with you. Prayer is knowing you. Prayer is talking with you. Prayer is having a conversation with you. Prayer is loving you. Prayer, yes, is loving you. And prayer is knowing myself. Yes. When you pray, you will not lean on another man's wisdom. You will not lean on your own knowledge and understanding. When you begin to pray, you will acknowledge God in all things. When you begin to pray, hallelujah, your life becomes a true reflection of the mandate of heaven. Make me a house of prayer. Make me an instrument of prayer. Spirit of the Lord, I ask of you, in this brand new day, restore me as you restore your church. Restore me. Restore me as you restore your nation. Restore me. Help me to take my place. As part of the living stone, help me to take my place. I want to dig deep. As the deep calls to the deep, I want to dig deep so I can, I can hear from you. I can know you. Yes. Restore me. Renew me. Revive me. Place upon me again the mandate and the quest of your presence. I want to be part of them who know you and who are known by you. Spirit of the Lord, I want to know you. I want to walk with you. Arise. Yes. You and the ark of your might come into this house. Come into this dwelling. Fill me with your spirit again. 
Holy Spirit, come breathe on me, breathe on me, breathe on me, breathe on me, awaken me, awaken me, breathe on me, Holy Spirit, touch every part of me, oh, align me to what matters to you, oh, let my heart beat after you, let my heart yearn after you, let my heart run, chase after you, oh God, Spirit of the Lord, I ask of you, don't oh, leave me the way I am, I cry out to you this morning. I cry out to you this morning. I cry for help this morning. I cry for help this morning. I refuse to depend on my own strength and ability. I have no might of my own. I have no strength of my own. Oh, help me to stop depending on the wisdom of men. Help me to turn to you. You say, turn to me and be saved. I turn to you this morning. I restore, I'm restored, I'm renewed, I'm revived. I'm being transformed back into your image and likeness. Spirit of the Lord, don't leave me the way I am. I desire change. I long for change. I long for transformation. Bring me back to the place of the fire. Bring me back to the place where I'm burning night and day day and night uh, transform my life make me once again a house of prayer yes 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 those who call upon you yes will not be put to shame Lord, they look unto you and their countenance was enlightened. Enlighten me, transform me. Oh God, breathe on me. 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 Breathe on me that I may live again. Breathe on me that I may live again. I want to live. You are my life. It's through you, oh God, that I can live. It's through you that I can walk through a troop. It's through you, oh God, that I can win, that I can war, that I can be victorious. It's through you, oh God. Foolish are they who put their trust in the arm of flesh. Lord, deliver me from the arm of flesh. The first flesh that I trust is myself. Oh God, help me to trust in you, to depend on you, to wait on you, to walk in you. In you I live, in you I move. In you this day, Lord, I have my being. Show me the way. Show me how Enoch walked with you 365 years on earth. Show me how to live a life that honor you. Awaken me. Awaken me. Awaken me. Awaken my conscience. Awaken my innermost being. Awaken my heart to the spirit of prayer. Yes. Awaken me to the spirit of intercession. Awaken me to the call. Yes. Of prayer. Awaken me. Prayer. Yes. Is the awakening of the conscience and the unconscious part of, of our being to the spirit of truth and to the reality of Christ's essence and authority. Wake me up. Wake me up. Wake me up. Wake my conscience. Every sinuous in me. Every part of my inner must be Lord let them cry out to you in the place of prayer yes Lord I want to know how to wait upon you the worst is it is those who wait upon you teach me how to wait I try to wait eight hours and by the ninth hour Lord I'm back to trusting something else trusting my own flesh spirit of the Lord teach me teach me the grace to, yes, to, to walk with you, to live with you, to move with you. Teach me the grace, oh God. Yes, to go on a walk with you. Teach me, oh God. Teach me. Help me to understand, oh God. Not to look at my own timing, but to live my life in accordance to your time and season. Oh God, help me to know how to wait. Help me to continue. Not to wait for the applause of man. Not to wait, oh God, for the encourage of, uh, encouragement of man. Oh God, because men will fail and men have failed. Every man has gone after his own ways, your word said. Oh Spirit of the Lord, help me. Help me in this new day to know that my help comes from you because you are my shepherd. Help me to know that my help comes from you. Help me to know that my help comes from you, not from any man. Help, help does not come from man. Promotion does not come from the north or south. Promotion comes from you. I wait on you as I continue to do what you have called me to do. As I continue, Lord, to invest in the place of prayer, in the place of the altar, as I continue to burn the midnight oil. Help me, O oh God, to carry enough oil. Salabaya. Le grabo shanda rabdabo. Enough oil. 
enough oil is what I ask for. Enough oil. Not just barely enough. Enough. Enough oil. Enough oil. Spirit of the Lord. Enough oil. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Enough oil to journey. To wait. So when there's a tyrant, I can continue. Yes, Spirit of God. Thank you for the formation of your spirit. Thank you for the mandate of your glory and grace over my life. In the name of Jesus, the fire on the altar shall be kept burning. It takes oil to keep the fire burning. It takes oil to keep the fire burning. It takes wood to keep the fire burning. Something must be fueling, fueling the fire. Yes, the appetite, your desire, your longing. Yes, your expectation, your motivation are the fuel of the fire. Yes. Keep your eyes locked onto him. Yes. They say where the treasure of a man is, that is where his heart will be. Your heart is where the altar is built. Yes. Keep the fire burning. Let it be extinguished. I tell you friends, the enemy is trying to extinguish the fire. To some of us, the fire is already extinguished. It's already quenched. But we believe in God this morning to steer our heart again. To steer our life again. To, to give us a spark. To spark that fire again. Yes. Yes. Every morning, the priest... The preacher add wood on the fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at another scripture. Then I'll be done this morning. Leviticus chapter 24 verse 3. Outside the veil of the testimony. In the tent of meeting. Aaron is to tend. Is to tend the lamb continually. Come on help me. Lord help me. Help me to understand my calling and my mandate. Uh, Aaron is, is to tend the lamb continually before the Lord from evening till morning, friends. You know what that means? We just shifted from the fire on the altar. Now we're talking about the fire of the Lamb. The fire of the revelation of knowing the Lord. Aaron is to tend it. You know what it means to tend something? It's like the work of a pruner. You must prune. You must, you must trim the wick. You must make sure all right, that you have the right week for the fire to keep burning. You can have oil, but if you're not tending, if you've gone asleep, the fire will die. The work of Aaron is to tend the lamps <laughs> continually before the Lord. You tend it. You trim it. You keep watch at it. You keep watch at the lamps, at the burning. Are they burning? Or is the weak weak? As the weak become weak. I mean, if you understand how the lamb used to walk back in the days, you will see that, you know, at the top of the weak it's become black. And is now very, you know, tender. To keep the lamb burning, you've got to make sure, all right, that you keep trimming the wick. So that, you know, the rope or whatever is there, the cloth or whatever you're using, amen, can continue to absorb enough oil to release flame. Got to tend it. That's the word they use there. Aaron must tend it. Outside the veil of the temple in Arah. In the tent of meeting, Aaron is to tend the lamps. Keep them burning. Keep them burning. Keep them. Don't let the fire die. Don't let the lamb go off. Aaron is to tend the lambs continually before the Lord from evening till morning. You talk about service. 
then somebody tells me that this is not a walk this is a continual lifestyle friends this is to be listen to this this is to be a permanent status for the generations to come he shall tend the lambs on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually friends I rest my case this morning as I show you this mandate if this is not what engages our heart and our life something is wrong If your heart cannot resonate with this either in yes lord or lord i have missed this order help me something is wrong i pray i ask that the lord will help us that in our busyness we will remember what really matters to god in our busyness of trying to make ends meet that we will understand what matters. What really matters in life. That we will keep the main thing the main thing. That we will keep our priorities right. You know they say a nation deserves you know, the kind of leaders they get. The reality is a nation deserves the kind of priesthood they get. May we become a priesthood who understand the pattern of the spirit and the order of fulfilling the great commission, the fulfilling our mandate and assignment. Do you know that every church was designed to actually be an altar for God? Where this spiritual activity, amen, is manifest? Do you know that is the purpose of the church? That we are actually supposed to be. The church is not just supposed to be. Uh, 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 excuse me. The church is not just supposed to have an altar. The church is supposed to be the altar. The altar. We're supposed to be. Amen. The burning lamb. We're supposed to be the place where the lamb of God never goes off. That's why we feel everywhere. But we can't even reach our street for God. mega churches mega mega structures but our prayer can't even pass our ceiling something is wrong something is wrong somebody somewhere missed the order it's time to restore the order there's enough saints to change transform society was it yesterday i was sharing it only took 120 people 120 people to turn their world inside out why the fire fell on them there was fire visible fire upon their lives just 120 people changed their world this is not by might, it's not by the mega structure, it's not by those massive, you know, you know, dwarfing, you know, intimidating structure. No, it is not the size of your pulpit. It's the size of your heart, it's the size of your altar. God help us. There are people you can't see. But their heart consumes the nation because their heart is an altar unto the Lord. God, turn our heart back to you. Help us to hear the cry of the nations. You said to Jeremiah, before you were ever formed or fashioned in your mothers whom I knew you, and I've ordained you a prophet to the nations. You have the capacity 
to transform you, one single person, to change the nation. You don't do that by your own ability. It's not because you have a prophetic message. It's because that message is burning with fire. It's fire that changed nations. It's fire that transformed nations. One of the things that I honor and appreciate about Ryan Bonke was a, it was a man who carried a fire. His messages were very simple. But this message, hallelujah, burned the hearts of people. In his own right, and I understand that he functioned in his own calling as an evangelist, but my point is, you can see that everywhere this man go, he carried a fire. And that fire were fashioned on the altar. You want to change your world. Whatever calling God has given to you. Whatever place God has mandated you. It could be in the corporate world. It could be in the state, amen, of politics. It could be in the world of science. Being a teacher. Or just being... Somebody who is an housewife training, raising your own kids. You need the fire of God. To be able to do what you are called to do, what you are doing. If you think you are going to do it by your own wisdom and going to get results. I can assure that result is going to be temporal. We all need the fire of God. I need the fire of God to continue to do what I am called to do. Not to be derailed, not to be shifted. It's my calling, it's my prayer that God will continue to help me to spend more time with Him and spend more time on the altar and spend more time gathering wood. We just read the scripture. It is the responsibility of the priest to keep feeding the fire wood every morning. Every morning. That's my duty. So that you can continue to do what you are called to do. It's not, the, it's not the easiest thing to do what I'm doing, I can assure you. Sometimes it feels burdensome. But I ask the Lord to renew my heart and refresh me. And empower me daily to understand. To see the joy set before me. So I, one can endure. Endurance is only possible when we see, when we have a vision of the future result. You can't endure where, the, where there's no sense of hope. I pray this morning that you will see, that you will understand the need to keep the fire burning on the altar. To keep the lamb penned continually before the Lord. Evening until morning. You know what that means? Evening time is when people go to bed and people want to sleep. But with the priesthood, they said he must keep, he must keep tending the lamb continually before the Lord from evening till morning. That's, what, that's where we get the concept of vigil from. We keep a vigil. May we be a people who learn to keep vigils. In the night time when the enemy wants to capitalize on the darkness. We must keep the lamp burning. We must make sure that there is light across the firmament. Across the nations. Across cities, community, homes. Keep the fire burning. Help us Father. Honor and glory be unto you, Lamb of God. Friends, this is what the Lord wants to teach us and has taught us this morning in the school of prayer with Christ. I hope your life has been greatly impacted and touched. I hope you have learned one or two things this morning. The mandate is the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah when he says, I'm nobody, I can't do anything. God says, no, Jeremiah, you don't understand. I knew you. I knew you. 
I have formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I already knew you and formed you. I sanctify you, set you aside, ordain you a spokesman. I ordain you a prophet. I ordain you as my servant. I ordain you as my messenger to the nations, to the ethnos. You're not an accident. You're not a nobody. You carry a mandate. You carry an assignment. You carry an eternal vision that will impact and transform society. So get working. Do not say you are small. Do not say you are empty. Do not say you are unable. Your prayer can change. Yes, that little condition, that people, your prayer can transform. Your prayer will reform. Your prayer, hallelujah, can bring forth deliverance to your home, to your family, to your children. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Don't let the enemy quench your, your, your zest, your zeal. Don't let the enemy say, because you can't see a result. Therefore, amen, there's, no, there's no impact. Continue. 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 Because the word of the Lord is that you must not stop. You must keep the fire burning. Then we read Leviticus chapter 6. Beautiful scripture. 12. He says, therefore the fire on the altar shall be kept burning. You have to keep it. Fire don't keep themselves burning. Somebody will have to keep feeding. Amen. The fire. Hallelujah. You have to keep feeding it. When you don't feel like doing that remember the purpose and the essence of the fire fire don't just get to burn for burning sake no know the purpose know the essence when you understand the essence and the purpose you do it that's what pushes me to pray when i look at lives and people god has committed into my hand i get up i just continue to pray yes even though sometimes i don't feel like doing it you don't have to feel like when you see the responsibility you understand the duty you get up and do it get up and do it you get up and do it there's a call to duty you get up and do it don't give excuse when you start giving excuse something else is taking place in your heart when you start giving excuse yes you are under an attack you get up and do it there's no excuse but to continue to advance in the light of God's prophetic intention Father, we thank you for what you have done once again. Ah, oh, our heart rejoice. I rejoice in you. Thank you, Father, for men and women whom you have awakened this morning once again. Whom you have, yes, mandated. Whom you have refreshed their sense of call to duty, their calling, their purposes. I thank you, Lord, that they will not, oh God, yes, go into slumber. But they will realize the power, the importance of prayer. Their prayer for their nation, for their community. For their continent they will understand how far their prayer can go in changing yes the lives of those in the place of decision making it's amazing that's why the bible says we must pray for those yes in authority because when we do amen they will not make terrible decisions on our behalf they will not do things that will jeopardize amen our lives we need to keep praying for them we need to keep praying for you know our, our, our community our leaders we need to keep praying for our families we need to continue to pray for men women pray for men men pray for women we need to keep praying amen that what god has begun to do the restoration he has begun that he will perfect it we need to pray for our children we need to pray amen that the enemy's hand will not reach them that the lies of the enemy all right yes to confuse them to confuse their identity to confuse their sex amen will not prevail we need to pray that god will give them wisdom knowledge and understanding we need to pray amen that they will feel secure in truth in love hallelujah that they will not be carried away by the spirit of destruction we need to pray for them we need to pray that god will supply all our needs let's look unto god let's look unto god i was telling god this morning god i need i need to do x y z but you, lord i don't have the resource i don't have the money god said ask me ask me ask me stop pointing stop trying to look at who we do it ask me and I began to ask the Lord, he's like, God, okay, I was being rebuked and I was being encouraged at the same time. Okay, Lord, I will ask you, I'm asking you. Yes, 
ask the Lord. Oftentimes, we, we you know we say we're praying, but our mind, Amen, is on people. When you ask the Lord, allow Him to respond. He will use people, of course. But let your eyes be on him. They look unto him and they were not ashamed. Their countenance were changed. Hallelujah. Ask the Lord. He is our provider. He is our good shepherd. He is our provider. What do you need? Ask the Lord. Keep asking the Lord. Don't ask the Lord and stop and start looking at men. No, I am not your provider. God is your provider. Don't look unto me. Look unto God. Is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever imagine or think. Ask the Lord, trust the Lord, don't lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge Him and watch Him direct your path. Watch Him direct your path today. Watch Him direct your path this week. Watch Him direct your path this month. Watch Him continue to direct your path, amen. Throughout this year, watch Him. Your life is in His hand. He will not let you sleep. He will not let you fall. He who watches over Israel never sleep nor slumber. He watches over you. He is your refuge. You will not be afraid. Run to him this morning. Find safety and security in him. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my bulwark. The Lord is my stronghold. He's your garrison. You're protected. You're safe in him. Father, we thank you. We rejoice in you. Oh, our heart longs for you. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you have done this morning. We bless you. We honor you. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Our Lord Sabbath host, you are worthy of glory and praise. Thank you, Father, for answering all our prayer. Thank you for my friends, brothers, uncles, aunties, Pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, everyone represented in our community. I pray for every one of them. I thank you for those who feel a connection to what we represent on this platform. Though I've never met them, some I know, some I don't know, but wherever they are across the nations, I pray this day your blessing, your peace, your joy upon their life. Lord, surprise them. Do a new thing in their life. Transform them. Awaken them to something new. Bring them closer into your heart desire and heartbeat. I thank you, Father. Oh, I rejoice in you over their life. Rejoice, sing over them. Thank you that you sustain them. In all their ways, keep them. Hallelujah. Heal them. Heal their body. Heal their mind. Heal their home. Heal their husband. Heal their wife. Heal their children. Whoever needs healing in their life, may your healing flow into their life. Thank you, Father. Thank you for that financial provision. Thank you, Lord. You provide financial provision for them in Jesus' name. Thank you. Those who need, yes, Father, who are in urgent need financially. Thank you. We ask you provide for us. We receive to the glory of your name. Amen and amen. Once again, friends, thank you for joining me this morning. Have yourself a blessed and a fruitful day. We'll see you again.